Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome everybody. Here we are with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, and my partner John Coleman to, I don't know, what are we going to talk about this week? Hey John, I know. Let's talk about expensive, fancy restaurants. They don't have to be French, but they, they always seem to be French and how some people are intimidated by them. They're yeah, just every, they every time have, I put you know, they don't know what to order. They can't read the, the French or whatever. John so many times advised me to expensive restaurants because he's that kind of guy. And I'm always nervous. I'm really nervous about it. Maybe you could help me feel more comfortable. Well, first of all, it's a um, shame to say it's an American thing you know, for all sorts of reasons. Americans are intimidated by, let's, let's not even call them fancy restaurants. Let's call them fine dining. Because you have to choose a fancy restaurant because you want to get kind of dressed up and, and you know, take your wife out and puts on her earrings and everything. That's fancy restaurant. You don't even have to have good food to be a fancy restaurant. So that's a fine dining restaurant, which could range from a haute cuisine French restaurant to a very fine Italian restaurant, of which you have many out there on the, on the West Coast, uh, to a Chinese restaurant that does banquet styles and beautifully decorated and so forth. Um, so let's say it's uh, fine dining. Americans have been um, interested in eating well at that level, but are a little bit antsy about how to go about it for a very simple reason. They weren't raised to eat the way Europeans are, which is to say that from a very young age, the Europeans, Italians, French, Germans, so forth, English, specifically the English, um, are taught how to use a fork and knife, um, how to use your napkin, what not to do and what not to say. I mean, I'm not talking about stifling conversation. I mean, the extreme, the other extreme would be Downton Abbey, uh, where you have a butler who goes around measuring with a ruler how far every plate is from the edge of the table, so they're all exactly one and three quarter inches from the edge of the table. Okay, which is kind of fun. I've I've done that. I, I showed one of my granddaughters how to do that. She thought that was a really neat idea. Americans are not into that sort of thing, and they don't know how to do it, and they're not raised to appreciate a wide variety of foods. So a little French boy or girl is in fact going to grow up eating a much wider variety of uh, foods that American children might say, yeah, I don't like that, um, Italian kids too. Okay, you can't afford to be that fussy when you grow up in a European household that way. Uh, okay, so that's, that's one thing. So American goes to a restaurant, let's say the menu isn't all French, which you're never gonna find anymore, or all, all Italian, you're never gonna find that anymore. It's always gonna be translated. Even Antoine's in New Orleans, which resolutely had their their menu all in French uh, up until about 20 years ago. Now they print the English right underneath it. Uh, also, even if you run into that rare restaurant, or if you are in France or Italy, they very, very often have a, a menu written in your language. You know, a lot of Japanese clientele, they're going to have it in Japanese, a lot of Chinese, um, that sort of thing. Um, so that's not insurmountable at all. Secondly, uh, Americans get their tidy whities in a knot over getting dressed to go out to fine dining with the most specious of reasons like, my clothes don't make the food taste better. Oh, that's for sure. Um, but <laughs> I can guarantee that dressing nicely or appropriately, I don't mean white tie and tails a tuxedo, which nobody does anymore, but dressing appropriate to your dining room that you're going to um, enhances the entire dinner for everyone. So no, the food's not going to taste better, but you're enjoying it in a in a in a heightened in a heightened way with your with your colleagues. And, okay, in America, the idea uh, that you have to even a man. Let's forget about women because women always like to dress up. I've rarely rarely seen a woman in any fine dining restaurant who looks shabbily dressed. Men believe uh, that putting on or keeping after work your jacket and tie on is, is a bottle, I, I gotta rip this thing off, I can't stand it. Well, you know, the answer is 
excuse me. <laughs> the answer is get a suit that fits. Get a collar that fits, okay? Learn how to tie your tie. You're not 14 years old anymore, right? Um, jackets are great. You know why jackets are great? You got pockets with your glasses in here. You got your wallet in here. You got everything. Okay, you got a comb and so on. Jackets are great uh, repositories. Um, so beyond that, you don't have to dress like Bo Brummel, who only dressed in black, by the way. He says uh, the worst thing in the world is to be overdressed. Um, but when I go to a restaurant, a fine restaurant, like here in New York, we have a place called um, a Gotham Bar and Grill. Uh, I'm sorry, it, it's called um, uh, the Tavern. Anyway, whatever. It's a fine dining restaurant. Um, tablecloths, beautiful furnishings, and all of the... The wait staff is dressed appropriately, very, very nicely. The women tailored, um, tailored dress and so forth. Um, and I'm sitting there, and most of the dining room, guys are not wearing jackets and ties, and there are no dress rules. But that dwindles down to no dress rules, meaning that the guy at the next table I'm sitting from is leaning over with his T-shirt and his hip hugger pants, and you know what I'm staring at. <laughs> the plumber, I said to myself. And I found this just disgusting. And I, I, I would, I almost asked for another, another table. Uh, and I spoke to the owner, whom I knew very well, the next day, and said, "Danny, I said, what's going on?" He says, "What can I do? I can't throw customers out. We all need the business." Um, so my harangue is that. Americans are ridiculous when they use as excuse that clothes don't make the uh, food taste any better. Um, no, but you may come off looking like a slob. I call it the Adam Sandler syndrome, um, where a, base, a backwards baseball cap. Well, a front with wearing your, your, your baseball cap with the peak out here is is to be uh, well dressed for such bozos, okay? But <laughs> turn it back with like an Adam Sandler and wearing a, a, a shirt which says uh, Lakers on it. Look, there's nothing wrong with that when you're going to even most restaurants these days. You go to a trattoria, you go to a pizzeria, you go to a Chinese restaurant, you go to a Thai restaurant, so forth and so on. Of course, that's even go to Nobu to eat sushi. But even then, I mean, I, I would go with a collared shirt okay, or a turtleneck or something like that. I might not wear a jacket. Blue jeans are accepted everywhere. Having said all this and chastised my American friends, um, the same has now obtained in Europe, which is to say that I do not know of a single restaurant, with one or two exceptions, maybe the Ritz dining room at the Ritz in London, where um, anything more than a jacket would ever be required. Uh, even they've doffed the ties. But you can eat anywhere on the Riviera, in Rome, in Munich, at the finest three-star restaurant and you're going to find that most men are going to be dressed uh, or not going to be wearing a jacket and tie. Um, that said, I kind of regret it. But generally speaking, I will also say the Europeans still dress a little bit more, a little bit nicer. The clothes are a little bit nicer. They, you know, they're not showing up in their old Navy uh, uh, um, cargo shorts and sandals. Yeah, clean jeans over uh, dirty jeans is at, at the least the minimum. Yeah, and three hundred dollars sliced jeans with the razor and stuff. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I got a pair of jeans in the closet; they're ready to go. I'm slicing them and selling them on eBay. Yeah, well, we'll pay for fine um, dining. You, you know, it's uh, it's interesting. I think the trend has almost been the the uh, w once upon a time people were intimidated uh, to go. I'll call it, um, my frame of reference intimidated to go to a fine dining restaurant. Um, because of all the things you described. And today, it's almost as if they have to dress down to prove that they're not intimidated. They've, they've got to, you and I were at a restaurant, uh, you were reviewing a restaurant in LA, I can't remember which one, but I remember sitting with you and looking over to the next table, and there was a, girl, they were a young couple on a date, and she was looked gorgeous. She had obviously dressed up for this date. He was in a T-shirt and jeans. And I thought to myself, you know, forget what the restaurant, the atmosphere of the restaurant requires. He didn't dress 
for her. He didn't dress appropriately yeah. for for a date. I thought. And uh, you're exactly right. And it's the it is it is an, uh, that L.A. casual thing. It comes out of Los Angeles and Southern California. Hey, you know, let's just be laid back. I understand that. I'm a laid back kind of guy. Um, and uh, but it all goes back, I think. She didn't cause it, but it is a hilarious. I love Lucy goes to Paris. And we all remember she goes to a little French restaurant and she opens up the menu. It's all in French. And she goes down and doesn't know what she points. She says, I'll have that. Femme à la demain. She says, closed on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> she says, all right, just bring me something. They bring her escargot snails. And she's looking at them like, how do I eat this? They give those tongues, snail tongues, which is pick it up and, and then take out the, the uh, snail from inside. <laughs> she takes it, you know, she clearly doesn't like the smell. She puts it on her nose and sits there at the table. Um, <laughs> and there have been many, many examples of that in the movies ever since. Mr. Bean has a, a, a great uh, satire on that, eating fancy. And um, we've seen a lot of that sort of thing. I remember Steve McQueen in a, a Western movie, he's a mountain man, and he uh, comes out the mountain and... Uh, this big rich rancher has somehow gotten Maine lobsters out in Montana and he serves them to Steve McQueen and says, Well, what do you think? He says, Well, never eaten a bug that big. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, education is a wonderful thing, but again, Americans are very are terrified to ask how to eat something. Can you show me? Um, I'm you know, i i all my life I'd say, Okay, here I am in China. Um, do I eat this with my fingers? Do I eat it? How do I get the meat out here? The, the, the French are a little crazy because there's only two things you're allowed to, on the etiquette, to eat with your fingers. One is French fries, thank God. The other one is, believe it or not, asparagus, even though they have asparagus for it. You can pick up an asparagus with its sauce and eat it like that. Voila. Don't really? make sense to me. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. All right, well, I'm certainly not going to be intimidated by any fine dining restaurant anymore. I'm just going to turn my baseball cap on backwards. That's all. And, and, and uh, John Coleman, I, I commit to you that I'm going to practice eating asparagus with my hands so that I don't embarrass you the next time you take me out to a Thank fine you, dining Mark. restaurant. You're always so thoughtful. I am. <laughs> John Mariani, thank you so much. It's been fun. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.